It's been a while since we've talked about Vladimir Tarasenko, one of the guys that has carried the NHL post, let's say, 2013-ish into the next generation of goal scoring. He was in the news for a good chunk of time throughout the past year, mostly because there was a trade request that the St. Louis Blues ultimately did not fulfill. This drama pretty much started in around 2018-19-ish. After that season when they won the Stanley Cup, there was an entire controversy going on as to Tarasenko and his health, because he only played 10 games in the proceeding season in 2019-20, he was sidelined the entire year with injuries, and there was an entire thing going on as to the medical staff in St. Louis, the way he was treated, and the way the St. Louis Blues handled the situation. When Vladimir returned to the lineup in the 2020 bubble, he wasn't great. Zero points in four games. I remember watching the series Vancouver versus St. Louis, and he wasn't really as effective as we wanted him to be. Once we heard about the trade rumors, there was extended drama going on amongst the fan base and the media, asking questions as to whether or not a team would trade for Tarasenko, especially at the cap hit that he is at. He's making $7.5 million a year until the end of next season, with a no-trade clause that he was apparently very willing to waive. The problem was, last season he had 14 points in 24 games and two goals in the four postseason games he played. Not necessarily the easiest player to trade, especially at that cap hit, but Tarasenko went out there and stuck it out. He was exposed to Seattle for the expansion draft, and the Kraken ended up not taking Tarasenko, electing instead to go to Vince Dunn, who actually has been pretty good for them as well. But this season, after fully recovering and coming back to the Blues lineup, despite all the drama and despite the trade request, Tarasenko has made things a lot easier not only for the St. Louis Blues when it comes to finding a potential trade partner, but for himself as well to establish credibility in this league once again, because in 65 games played at the time of recording this audio, Tarasenko has 65 total points. 26 goals, 39 assists, he's on pace for 30 goals in 75 games, do the math over a full 82 game season, 26 Dibby 65 multiplied out by 82. Tarasenko was on pace for a 33 goal year, which would be back in the territory of what he was accomplishing before he got sidelined in 2019. He had two straight 33 goal years in 2017 18 to 2018 19. He's not at the same 40 goal pace that he was at earlier on in the mid 2010s, but still getting a point per game pace at 30 years old, making $7.5 million a season is certainly not bad. And so we head over onto NHL.com, where an article published by Dan Rosen on April 5th goes over just a brief little update as to the entire Tarasenko situation, or I guess you could say a lack of an update, which sort of serves as the update itself. It's kind of complicated. Let's just go ahead and read it. Mailbag. Kane, Taves, future with the Blackhawks, as well as the Sabres growth. NHL.com's Dan Rosen answers your weekly questions. Here's the question from user, okay, what the hell, J. Ryan Itzika. Which of these guys will be with their current teams when the puck drops next October, so a few months from now? Kane, Taves, Debrinkit, Miller, Besser, Strom, Mackenzie, Blackwood, Chitrin, Klingberg, Tarasenko, and Forsberg. Rosen says that Kane, Taves, Debrinkit, Forsberg, Blackwood, and Chitrin will be with their current teams, so that's the Blackhawks, the Predators, the Devils, and the Coyotes. And he says that Besser, Miller, Strom, Tarasenko, and Klingberg will not be. Now, for my Vancouver Canucks faithful, yes, we're going to revisit this article later today to talk about Besser and Miller, but when it comes to the last name that is highlighted in his no column, it is Vladimir Tarasenko. Now, there are some pretty in-depth answers as to everybody that is listed on here, but I only really wanted to focus on Tarasenko and what Rosen has to say. Tarasenko asked the Blues to trade him. The forward had been good for them this season, though, but we haven't heard anything about his trade request being rescinded. If the offer fits the Blues' needs, expect them to move the 30-year-old in the offseason. He's got one year left on his contract to 7.5. Strom and Klingberg are pending UFAs. I would be surprised if they did not test the market. 
What I also wanted to do was go over on Inspector's Hockey for April 11th, so two days ago, and highlight what Lyle Richardson has to say about Tarasenko over there. He was reportedly unhappy over the treatment he received for his shoulder surgeries by the Blues medical staff and the management's handling of the situation. To his credit, he hasn't allowed this to affect his performance or his relationship with his teammates. Nevertheless, if Tarasenko still wants out, I expect the Blues will have an easier time finding trade partners this summer. He's been healthy this season with 65 points in as many games games, and has only a year left. While the cap hit is $7.5 million a year, his actual salary for next season is 5.5. And so, pretty much, the update on Tarasenko is not really an update. It's he still, according to everything that we know, might be in the same position as he was a year ago. It's just a lot easier to think about trading Tarasenko now, and it's a lot easier for other teams to say, hey, he's a good player, let's get him. For the St. Louis Blues, they are pretty competitive. They're still in a playoff spot right now. It's likely that you'll see Tarasenko tearing it up in the playoffs because the Blues, I mean, they're currently third in the Central, and the Central has that big lead over the wild cards. so I find it unlikely the St. Louis Blues are going to miss out on this year's postseason dance. Going up against the Minnesota Wild, it's going to be a fun matchup to see, and having those two Russian snipers on either side, Tarasenko versus Kaprizov, it's going to be fun for sure. But next season, when it comes to the St. Louis Blues, they do have themselves a pretty interesting cap situation they're going to have to work out. Now, I'm not talking about this upcoming offseason, but the one after in 2023, when Tarasenko's $7.5 million a year comes off the books. Because alongside of Tarasenko, you're also going to have Captain Ryan O'Reilly expiring, Jordan Cairo is going to need a new contract. Robert Thomas is going to be an RFA. Not to mention Ivan Barbashev, Nathan Walker, Logan Brown. Then you're going to have a few other guys that you're going to think about as well. Vili Husso is getting a new contract for next season now. So there is an interesting conversation to have with the Blues and where they go cap-wise in 2023. They've got about $36 million in cap space right now at the time of recording this audio. And if a Vladimir Tarasenko does not fit into their plans, because he's going to be 31 at this point, if you don't trade him this offseason, you're going to have to go through those negotiations of keeping him around and deciding where to go from here because he already expressed that he didn't want to play for your team earlier. This is all for naught, of course, if Tarasenko one day within the next few months just goes out there and says, hey, I'm all of a sudden okay with the Blues again, I liked how he played in 2021-2022, I'm not going to get traded anymore, I'm gonna stay. And if that's the case, then the Blues don't really have anything to lose by keeping a guy like Vladimir freaking Tarasenko on their team, right? It's just, the only reason this entire trade thing was a thing was because it was very public that he himself was the guy that wanted to wave and that wanted out, and who wanted a new start for him and his family. We had talked about a few teams, like the New Jersey teams, or excuse me, the New York teams, so the Rangers, Islanders, and the Devils. We had talked about the Carolina Hurricanes. There were conversations about Seattle because he was exposed in the expansion draft as to whether or not that would be a good fit. There was the entire thing about the Florida Panthers maybe getting involved there, but I feel like that was mostly a thing for this season. They ended up getting Giroux, which is a pretty good player as well, so I don't really know if the Florida Panthers would have too much of a drive to do that for next season. Tarasenko, as we said, though, is only going to have one more year on his contract, so you could probably say this is more like a rental situation. If you don't see the Blues trade him this upcoming offseason, assuming nothing changes and he still wants to get traded, then expect him to be gone maybe by the trade deadline, but either way, Dan Rosen is predicting that the trade is going to happen sooner rather than later by the time I October 2022 rolls around, he says that Tarasenko will be with a new team. It's just a question as to where that team is going to be. So you can let me know in the comments all your thoughts about Tarasenko, his performance so far this year, because... I mean, a point-per-game player in 65 games on pace for 30-something goals over a full 82-game season is definitely not bad. It's just, what exactly is this type of player at 30 years old, 7.5 for one more year next season, worth on the market? Is he a top prospect caliber guy? Is he a first-round pick caliber guy? Is it a first and a top prospect? I said that a few months of Claude Giroux with one season remaining was not worth the amount of things that the Philadelphia Flyers got in return, mostly because the Flyers added when they traded to Giroux away to the Florida Panthers, but at the end of the day, they still got themselves a first-round pick, they still got themselves Owen Tippett, so those are some good building blocks for the future. For St. Louis, though, I'd think that they would probably try to go after some guys that have some cheap cap hits, maybe some entry-level deals that are a lot more valuable than the contract dollar amounts would provide, because you do have a whole bunch of guys to re-sign in 2023, as we said, so let me know in the comments all your thoughts about Vladimir Tarasenko in this trade update. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishra Charles 99, and... Bye.